Hello and welcome to Glenrip Studios, and today we're going to be creating a LEGO gun inside of Unreal Engine. So first export from Mechabricks and import into Blender. Right click, shade, auto smooth, tab in edit mode, select everything and do tries to quads, and then merge by distance. Once you've done that, I'm just going to tab in edit mode, and then change the origin point to be like this around the trigger and then apply rotation and scale export as FBX use the operator presets Lego to UE which is just selected objects mesh and a scale of 0 0.05 smoothing face and then everything else should be the same name that gun and then export next you want to head over to mix mode to get some animations so click upload and then head to the LEGO tutorial folder. And then we could use this, except it's only the skeleton. So I'm gonna come into LEGO Guy, and then you'll see there's a zip folder called Drop in Mixamo. So just drop that in. And now you can see that there's textures and a LEGO Guy. I downloaded a rifle gun, so I'm going to choose the rifle animations. There's also pistol animations, which are a little different, but I'm just going to choose rifle. And I'm gonna get the one that's closer to the waist and you want to do without skin. Next we want a rifle walk, and for that I turned up the overdrive because it was going too slow. And then I'm also gonna get a walk left and walk right. And then I'm also gonna get walk forward left and walk forward right. And then I'm going to type in aim. I want to get an idle aim, and then a rifle aiming idle. And then I'm going to get a walk, a walking back. And then that should be all of them for now. Let's going back into Unreal Engine. I'm going to go to content, characters, and I'm just going to take the archer, copy and paste that. And then I'm just going to create a new folder, call it shooter, and then I'm going to go into archer, and then copy and paste. And I'm just going to rename the shooter, and usually you just put this in assets, I'm just going to put it in the character folder. But I'm going to import the gun that I exported, and then you want to make sure that build nanite and generate missing collision are ticked and that import normals and tangents, otherwise the mesh will look too smooth in places. Next I'm going to right click, create a blueprint, actor, and then call this gun, open that up, and then I'm just going to drag the gun into here, and then select the gun, and scroll down on collisions to no collision. Compile, and that's all we need to do in there. Next we're going to create another blueprint, actor, and then call this bullet. Open that up. Add a sphere, make sure it's a collision, and just drag that on top of the scene root, and then add, and choose a static mesh, we're going to do a sphere. I'm going to scale down the sphere so that it fits inside of the collision, and I'm just going to give it the gray material. Next we want to add projectile movement, I'm going to set the initial speed to 32,000. And we might change this later, just depending on how it looks. And then the scroll down, and the velocity, we want to change this one to 3000. Next thing I'm going to do is go to character, Lego guy, animations, and then I'm going to right click, new folder, and then I'll call it shooter, right click, import, and then select all of your animations and click open. Next you want to select the Lego guy, I'm going to do the Lego mesh, not the Lego cape, and then import. And then once we've done that, we're going to go to Lego Guy, and then I'm going to copy the Lego Archery, and then call this Shooter BS. Next, I want the Lego Archery and a BP, then I'll copy and paste that as well. And then I'm going to rename this Shooter Anim BP. So I'm going to open both of those up, and I'm just going to delete all of these. After you do that, type in Rifle or Pistol, whichever one you did, and then drag in the walk. And then I'm going to get Walk Left and Walk Right. And then one thing I forgot, I'm going to download the rifle run as well from Mixmo. So just import that, and then I'm just going to drag that into the shooter BS. So I'll save that, close out of it for now, and then I want to open up the animation graph. And I'm going to download the jump up, jump down, and jump loop. Next I'll import those again, and then in the NMBP, I'm going to go to jump, and then get jump up, and drag it into here. And then in fall loop, I'm going to get the jump loop, drag that in, main states, land, and then I'll get jump down. So if I compile that, and then head over to locomotion in the idle, 
I'm going to get the rifle idle, drag it in, and then I'm going to drag off of idle, add state, and I'm going to call this aim, and then I'll drag back, and then I also want to drag this over here to walk slash run. And I'm going to create a new variable here, I'm going to call this aim question mark, and then I'll go to aim. If it is aiming, then we want to go to aim as well from here, and then not aim, we want to get aim, and then we want to type in not bool. And then I'll just copy that and put that from going into walk and run. And then in the walk and run, I'm going to go to assets. I'm going to type in shooter and then get the shooter BS and just drag that in. It's back in characters, shooter, BP shooter. I'm going to come to the viewport and then I'll switch this out for the shooter. And then the anim class, I want to get shooter anim BP. And then in level one, I want to go to world settings. And instead of BP character, I'm going to get BP shooter. Next, I want to go to characters, back to like you guy and I want to take the shooter BS copy and paste that and I want to call this aim BS open that up and I'm just going to change the maximum speed to be 240 and you'll have to delete some of these up here and look at some errors once you do that it should work I'm going to change the grid divisions back up to three and then I'm going to type in aim and I'm going to get rifle idle aiming I'm going to get standing aim walk right standing aim walk left and standing aim walk forward Next, I want to come to the animations folder to make sure I'm getting the correct animations. So I want to get the walking, and you can see that he's holding it up, so he's aiming. So this is walking aiming, so I'm going to drag that up there to the walk, and then I want to get walk left and walk right. And then for the walking back, you just want to drag these. You want to add it to each of the corners. And I think I'm just going to get rid of the left and right ones. So after saving and closing that out, I'm going to go to the shooter BP, the aim, and then I'm going to type in aim BS, and then drag that in, and I want to drag in the ground speed, and also the yaw offset. Next, I want to go to BP Shooter, Event Graph, and I also want to go to Content, Third Person, Input, Actions, copy and paste any one of these, and rename it to aim, input, IMC default, add an action mapping, call it aim, and I'm going to make it the right mouse button. And then in most LEGO games, the gun has infinite ammo. So I'm just going to delete this. If you want to have an ammo system, just do the exact same thing with the arrows. So create a new variable and call it ammo. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to keep the action can fire because I want to add some delay. I don't want it to be a rapid fire machine gun. And then I'm going to delete this. I'm also going to delete this. Next, I'm going to go to viewport and I'm going to get rid of the BP bow. And then I'm going to go to Content, Characters, Shooter, and then I'm going to get the Gun 01. Drag it into the BP Shooter onto the mesh, and I want to open up the Skeleton. Go to Skeleton Mesh. Next, make sure that the gun is parented to the mesh. Just drag it on top of the mesh, and then come up here to Parent Socket, type in R, and we just want the right hand. Next, I'm going to click on the character, pause animations, and scale and rotate this accordingly. And then I'm going to click on the character again once you're done, and unpause the animations. So now you can see he's holding the gun, and right now we can actually shoot arrows. Instead of arrows, we want to shoot bullets. I'm going to click on the gun, and to get a sphere. Make sure it's attached to the gun. I'm actually going to pause the animations again. Select the sphere, and you'll probably have to scale it down. And this is just going to be a reference for where we spawn our bullet. So I'm just going to put that on the tip. And then unpause the animations, and you can see that it follows. I'm going to select that, type invisible, and untick that so you can't see it in the game. On the event graph, I'm going to drag that off, get transform, and then drag that into the break transform. And then I also want to change the BP arrow to BP bullet. And I'm just going to get rid of this, and also this. And I'm not going to use this for now. So next, I'm just going to drag off up here, and then also add a delay between it which you can change depending on how often you want to fire. So you'll see that it's working, except I only want to shoot when he's aiming, because right now it doesn't look very good. The bullet is coming from the muzzle and then heading towards the direction that I'm aiming. However, guns naturally don't do that. Also, this says as LEGO Archery and MVP. We want to change that to Shooter. So over here, I want to get an instance, and then I'm going to cast to the Shooter and MVP. And then using control click, I'm just going to drag these into the new slots. Next, I'm going to rename this as LEGO Shooter BP. And also, I'll change this to LEGO Shooter BP. 
and make sure that it's the ANMBP and then the object reference. Once that's done, plug it in and then compile. And right away, you'll see that there's some issues. So first, I'm just going to come over here and then get dead. And I'm going to copy and paste this because there's a couple of these. And then for this one, in the death, I'm going to set death and then leave it unticked. And also in death, after I replace that, I'm going to set dead again and then take that true. So once those are all changed out, I can come back over here and then I'm going to drag off of here. I'm going to hold down B and then get aim and plug it in there. So if I am aiming, I want to be able to shoot. Down here, I want to get enhanced input aim. And I'm just going to copy as the go shooter BP. And then I want to set and I'm also going to copy the is falling because I don't want to aim if I'm shooting, if I'm jumping. And I'm going to copy the aim and paste it and then untick it. And I'm going to plug that into the completed. So now if I right click, you can see I'm in the aiming mode. However, I'm going too fast and the gun is in the wrong direction. I'm going to come in here and switch it to the left hand. And then I'll just adjust this accordingly. And that's a little better. It's still a little off though, so I'm just going to adjust that. And now you can see that it's looking a lot better. The bullet isn't moving very fast though, and it's a bit too big. So I'm going to come over to the bullet, and then projectile movement, and I'm going to make this 65,000. I'm going to come to the viewport, the sphere, and then just scale that down a little bit. So if I'm not aiming, I can't shoot. If I am aiming, then I can't shoot. And I can see that's working better. So the aiming position is looking good. However, I'm not liking how the idle position is looking. And something we can do is we're going to save this location for when we're aiming, and then it will set a new location for when we're in idle, and then we'll just switch between those over here. So on triggered, when we are aiming, I want to get the gun, and then I want to set, I'm going to set the relative location and rotation. So I'm going to plug that in, and then click on the gun, then I'm just going to copy all of this into here. Make sure to delete this symbol at the end when you copy and paste, otherwise it won't work. Next, I'm going to copy and paste this and then plug that into here, and then plug the gun into the target, and then in the viewport, I'm going to set this how I would like it to be in the regular idle. So I think that would be good for me, so I'm going to go into the event graph with the gun selected, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing, copying in the new location, and then also the rotation. So I got the wrong one, I was supposed to set the... So I'll just get that, and then painfully copy those back and then copy paste and do that for the next one. Next, just drag in the new pins, delete the old ones, and drag the gun in. So now we can walk around and run, and then we can also aim, and they all go in the correct directions. And it's pretty seamless. If you wanted to add a sound effect, I would do it right here after campfire. So next, we're gonna make the bullet deal damage. So inside the bullet, delete everything, and then get event hit. Off of other, you want to get actor has tag, and then hold down B, get a branch, and then type in enemy. And we want to go to our AI, and we want to open up the BP AI, and I'm going to change this to the Lego Anim BP. Next, you want to click on the BP AI self, go to a tag, actor, and then type in enemy, exactly as you spelled it before, and we'll come back to this later. Off of true, you want to apply damage. Off the damage actor, you want to get other. And the damage causer, you want to get self off of damage base. I'm going to get a select and just add a few of these. I'm going to add 30, 35, 20, and 25. And then off the index, I want to get a random integer and then type in 4. It says 3, but there's also 0, so there's 4 options. Next, I'm going to destroy actor. And then off of false, I'm also going to destroy the actor. And off of false, you could put a dirt animation or a concrete animation where it, like where it's hitting the wall. And over here, you could add like a blood or other animation or other emitter to show that it hit the character. And I might be using something like this to damage the AI and the player with the sword and shield just to make a better, more efficient way to do it. Next in the BP AI, I'm going to get event damage. And then I want to get the health, and off of damage, I'm going to truncate, and then drag off, type in subtract, plug those in. First, I want to check if he's dead, 
so that I won't apply any damage if he's dead. And I'm just going to create the variable is dead and then drag that in. Next, I'm going to clamp the integer from 0 to 100. Then I'm going to set the health and plug that in off of false. Next, I'm going to get a branch and a less than or equal to with 0 and health. If it's true, I want to get the dead function. And if it's false, you might want to play a sound or animation to show that it was hit. In the death event, I'm going to set the death to true, replacing that. So if I compile and then go to the level one and drag in the BP AI. And so I can see what's going on, I'm going to go into the bullet BP. After I apply damage, I'm going to play a sound. I'm just going to do the arrow hit. And then in the BP AI, I'm going to change this to be our new dead function, our new dead variable. And this is in the pawn sensing. And then also in the AI for the sprint speed, I'm going to change that down to 800. I think it's way too high. And then back to the death, I realized that I need the other death function as well. So I'm going to go to the Lego BP and then set dead. I'm also going to get the character movement and then disable movement. And as I'm looking at this code, I'm seeing a lot of issues with it. I've learned a lot more since my first videos, so I might have to make a video to show an updated version of how to do this better. For now though, you can see that he walks, he runs, and he aims. You can also shoot it, and then there's a sound when he shoots. And when I shoot him enough times, he falls down and dies. That's all for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.